Hi, this is Mike at Game from Scratch. Today we're going to look at a technique in Blender that uh, allows you to make quick organic shapes using splines. Uh, this actually used to be the way we did the majority of organic modeling 5, 10, 15 years ago, basically before the rise of subdivision surfaces. Nowadays, um, it's used quite a bit less to the point that people are starting to forget how to do this stuff. The truth of the matter is the spline tools in Blender were always a little iffy. Uh, they started averaging some features like grid fill that make using this kind of stuff so much handier. And let me just quickly show you how this works. It's, it's very simple, but it creates very nice organic shapes very fast. So let's switch over into, a lot of times you're going to want to work in an orthogonal view, but let's go to the top view here. We're just going to go here and go add, and then you go curve, and bezier. Like so, there's your default bezier curve. And just like working in normal polygons, um, you can go into edit mode, and the difference is, if, you, if you've worked with um, splines like in Adobe Illustrator or um, Inkscape, this should be very familiar to you, but these are basically control handles, and they control how the curve looks. So you're working in 2D here, and there is a control point there, control point there. So you have two center points, and then each end has a pivot that controls how the curve bends around it. Also controls the length, and the speed of the bend. And what you can do is you can select your endpoint. If you need to add more detail to your curve, just hit E for extrude, and you can add more to your curve. And once again, control the shape using the control handles, like so. Right. So you can create the basic outline of your uh, shape using splines like this. So let's take this guy from the top view and we're done with it. That's our basic shape. So let's say we were creating a, I don't know, a sled. So now what I can do is I can take this guy, so, and just duplicate him. Shift D, and drag it down like so. So now I have two curves like this. All right. Now select them both, and then object, and then convert to. And what we want to do is mesh from curve. When we do this, set keep original to no, or you'll have a bunch of ugly splines left over. So now what we've got, these are meshes instead of curves now. Uh, now all we want to do is take them, and we want to select both, like so. Hit Control J to turn them into a single entity, or we join them together. So now we want to switch over into edit mode. And what these are is basically two floating edge loops. And we just want to select the, the first one, and then hold Shift and select the second one, like so. And you want to go bridge edge loops, that guy. And then boom, you have a nice basic sled model pretty much instant. In this particular case, you've just got the outside hull though. So what you often want to do is thicken this or turn this into like a thicker object. You could do this with an extrusion, but there's actually uh, another tool that's been built into Blender called Solidify. So just go in here and just with the faces all selected, just hit Control, uh, Focus, Control F, and then you want to just come down here and hit solidify. So now you've got a solid thick object as opposed to, so if we want to increase the thickness, and like that. So there you go, yes, you just created a sled in about seven seconds. Uh, so working base from curves is a very, very, very powerful ability. Uh, another thing that you want to do often is create closed shapes. And this is an area where Blender used to really suck. Let me just get out of there and close this off. I'll use, an, here's an example. Let's start from a fresh scene. Let's go about the origin here, and we'll just create a uh, top view, and we're going to add a bunch of circles. And we're just going to basically loft out like a, like a vase or something like that, a finger or an arm or whatever. That's what you would, this is a way you could do it. And basically, a, a circle is just a closed bezier curve to start with. Uh, so there's one. You can manipulate them just like normal. You can uh, scale down a single axis, etc. So let's just go ahead, create a base one. Let's move it just a little bit off the plane so it's easier to see from the side. Okay, Shift D. Let's duplicate it and move that up a little bit. Like so. Same, same process. Uh, all right, let's actually get them kind of all in a row. Oh, I'm in perspective. There. 
ortho makes a lot more sense. Uh, here, I'll move it about the origin. All right. So there we've got three curves in space. And we'll just kind of scale one down and scale the other and get a little bit more interest. All right, so select each one like that. Once again, once they are all selected, we just go in and convert them to mesh. And I hit Control J to join them all into a single entity. Go into edit mode, like so. Switch over to vertices. Select each edge loop, like so. Bridge edge loops. Ooh, nice. Uh, there, it's a Apollo lunar lander. Uh, now, what you often want to do, though, is close off this face. And this has always been actually a little bit tricky in Blender. A lot of times, for other shapes, if you were using a pre-built, like, uh, like a torus, you, you can, not a torus, uh, a cylinder, you can say cap ends, and it'll automatically create one for you, but it also can often create a really crappy pinwheel look. Now, nice thing is, they've recently added something called the grid fill. So let's grab this edge loop right here. Ah. Like so. Alright, and then you just go to, and yeah, we'll type it out. Select grid fill. And boom, nicely capped. Uh, the way it actually is capped is completely configurable by you over here, so you can change the directions. That probably is supposed to be, you can change the uh, the number of, oh sorry, that's the, the orientation of the spans, and this is the number of spans. So instead of having an ugly pinwheel, you can actually do pretty close to a one-to-one. -one. Yeah, I'll go like that. So now we'll have a nice amount of detail here. Now, one thing to be aware of, and this kind of sucks with this setup, and this is the only real fault is that guy right there. That's going to break your edge loops. So here, let me show you. Let's go over to edge mode here. See? It's that guy. So you have the option. You could come in here and join up. And you're going to have four corners just like this. Like him, like him. And him. And then now you have your nice edge loop back. However, now you have these weird kinks in the corner. So when you start doing editing down here, it could get a bit weird. But even still, like, let's go in here. And let's do oops, mesh. Proportional edit. And we want to enable it so here, and then scroll wheel to determine the amount of fall off. But as we pull it down, it's not not too bad. And what you're going to probably want to do, though, a lot of times, is to smooth out this particular edge, and that can be done. Let's back over, select your edge loop, switch over to vertices, and then just do a vertex smooth, like so. That. Okay, now we're making a fist. <laughs> but that is a, a nice way of making it so your edges pass over. Now the catch is, since we did that little clip right here to make this edge loop preserved, this edge loop is now junk. So that is the downside to doing the fill. You're going to have this awkward um, lack of edge loops. You say, oh, I could fix it again by spanning here, but then it's going to pass it down one more, one more, one more. But eventually you're going to have a seam or a corner that is going to break your edge loops anyways. Uh, this is the one downside of using the fill approach. Uh, there might be a nicer, pro might nicer way to deal with that, uh, but that way works well enough for me. So that's a nice way of making quick organic shapes uh, using splines, kind of like the way we used to do things years ago. The, the recent tools in Blender, the, uh, the bridge mode works a lot better than it used to. The grid fill, I don't even think used to exist. And those additions make this style of work uh, much, much more useful. Now, one of your major downsides here, though, and I'll just discuss that quickly before I move on. Let me just get rid of here. Is uh, when you create your uh, mesh or your curve, 
let's go ahead and create it right here. All right, and when we take this guy and we convert it to a mesh, there's a lot of vertices being made. And the downside to taking this approach to, to quick modeling of organic shapes is you're going to have uh, a lot more geometry than you necessarily need. So it, it can be a bit wasteful unless you, if you're dealing with nice symmetrical shapes, you're going to probably want a consistent level of detail, uh, but a lot of times you don't. Um, and that's the downside to this approach is you will probably have a bit more geometry than you wish to. Of course, you could pare it down uh, or you could even, if you want by hand, just come down here and, uh, you know, take out the detail you want. Like so. Let's grab a couple more. All right. So obviously you're not going to have quite as smooth as a, as a curve as you did before. But when I go ahead now and do uh, and join and switch over to edge mode, and we do our bridge now, we have less geometry being used. But there is definitely a manual process of when you go from the curve to the uh, the edges the, after the polygon conversion, you're probably going to have more geometry than you want. So you're either going to want to do some manual cleanup like I just did, or you know what, you could even create your object completely and then just retopo it later. So if you don't care about resolution all that much, it's a nice approach anyways. But that is the one downside of doing the curve of approach, is you will probably generate more geometry, uh, more universal, uh, sorry, more uh, uh, across the, the entire uh, topology type geometry than you probably want to. Uh, but as you can see, using curves and uh, bridge fills it is definitely a very, very, very uh, fast way of um, making organic shapes. And once again, you can also, here, there is the fill, which will cap it on the end, but then you create this really nasty single shape thing, and that's why grid fill comes in, and it allows you to make a nicer, smoother extrusion, because you should have to do it like this, or even worse, like this, which got really old really fast. So the approach of this grid fill really does make closing these shapes off uh, very handy. I uh, hope that was useful to some of you. Uh, like I said, you can do some really neat organic stuff using curves and blender, and that is how. Uh, thanks a lot. Bye.